Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about one more concept in computer organization that is the functional units of a digital system. So functional units of a digital system or we can say it as a computer. Digital system. Because so one best example for this digital system is a computer. So we can say the, the units are, I mean the functional units of a computer, right? So there are different functional units. One is an input unit. Central processing unit. And in this central processing unit, there is a one more unit called ALU unit, memory, memory unit, control unit. And the next one, output unit. So the name itself indicates the input unit is responsible to take the input from the user okay so example we are saying it as a computer so the user will give some inputs through some input device so that the, the system will take the input and process the data and obviously the results will be again sent to the user right so input unit is responsible for all the unit input devices so this is responsible for a input devices. So we know the input devices. So through which we are going to give the input for the uh, system. So one is a keyboard, mouse, right? So these are the best examples because through these devices we are giving some inputs, right? So input devices complete responsible is our input unit. And once the input is given then the system will start processing the data okay processing the input in order to produce the output okay so that complete execution of a, any process will be done by using this central processing unit so execution of a process so process is uh, simply we can say it as an instructions. So whatever the instructions the user is giving, those instructions will be executed only by the processing unit. So a processor will execute everything. So whatever the execution, whatever the process is being executed, that will be done only through this central processing unit. And in this central processing unit, the processor will execute all the processes. And mainly, this is a central processing unit consists of again three different units. One is ALU, which we call it as arithmetic logical unit. So, this arithmetic logic unit is mainly responsible to execute all the arithmetic operations and the logical operations. So we are giving some sort of input. So in that input, if there are any arithmetic operations or the logical operations, so during the execution of a process, that complete arithmetic and logical operations will be executed by this particular ALU. That means arithmetic logic unit. So arithmetic operations are so addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, mod, etc., etc., will be the arithmetic operations. And the logical operations, end operation, or operation, not operation. So all these are the logical operations. So if if our instructions being having these uh, operations, that will be executed by the A. And the next one is a memory unit. So the major advantage of any digital system is a memory unit because so this memory unit is meant for storing the data so some sort of data can be stored in the memory so this is for 
storage storage and this again divides into two categories one is a primary memory and the secondary memory see primary memory and secondary memory So primary memory we call it as a RAM and uh, see the secondary memory uh, we can say it as a hard disk okay flash drives etc etc we can call them as a secondary memory and in this primary memory okay so very short uh, memory and uh, if the power is off automatically whatever the data which is stored in the primary memory will be get erased so when the power is off data will be lost and here when the power is off data is safe data will not be lost so this type of memory so there is a, another type of memory we call it as a cache memory cache memory so this cache memory is mainly used for the quick access quick access as well as the fast processing okay so this is for quick access and fast processing so we can say this will be in between the primary memory and the secondary memory so whenever we are going to execute one process what happens means that the instructions or the data which is stored in the secondary memory will be bring to the primary memory will be load to the primary memory and from the primary memory the processor will get execute this process so the cache memory is a block in between primary memory and the secondary memory so that any if you want to access any data so we can get the data from this cache memory so which gives the quick access in the fast processing so in our further sessions we'll discuss more about this cache memory okay so this is the storage and the control unit so here the name itself indicates it controls all other units so it controls all other units that means so if if our instructions are having some arithmetic operations then that 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 process of that instruction should be sent to the alu so that means what the alu should do what the memory should do what the input unit should do so everything the every control will be under this control unit okay it controls all the other units right so this is responsible to give the instructions or to say what to do for all the other units so that's why we call it as a control unit so these three units combinedly called as a central processing unit and that is called as a processor so which we are uh, using in our systems processor so whatever the execution whatever the instructions we are executing in the computer that will be executed only by the processor itself right then the last one is that output unit so name itself indicates once the data has been processed by this central processing unit the output should be delivered to the user so how the data will be delivered that means we are having some output devices through that output devices the system will send the output to the user so we know that output unit uh, which is a monitor so in which we are going to uh, see the output and a printer printer is also one another output unit right so majorly we will see the outputs in the monitor so we are executing the programs the program will be get executed so we are typing the program that means we are using the keyboard as a input unit right for example the instruction is so a 
plus b that means uh, let it be 5 plus 7 so you have to enter 5 plus 7 that means all these are the inputs okay all these are the inputs so we are typing these inputs through this input unit okay through this input unit that means a keyboard so here you can write it keyboard so using the keyboard we are giving the input and then that instructions will be processed by the central processing unit and see these two are the numbers and we need to perform the binary sorry arithmetic addition so this alu will take care about this instruction and it will execute this one so we will get a 12 and whatever the output we are getting here that will be processed to the output device through the output device that is a monitor or a printer or a printer right so these are known as a functional units of a digital system or a functional units of a computer so i'll draw the diagram so i think you know the diagram so you might be learning this diagram since your childhood so once again i'll draw this and we'll close so we'll see the input we have to pass the input from here and see This is a CPU, so which consists of uh, three parts. One is ALU, and another one is a control unit. Control unit, another one is a memory unit. Memory unit, and uh, this is a output. So, whatever the thing we have sending to the input so this cpu process the instructions and it will send to the output so here we can say it is a keyboard we are using our computer so we are giving some instructions to the computer through the keyboard and the processing will be done here the processing or execution will be done here and after that the data output will be processed and here in a monitor we, we are going to check the output okay so this is a simple thing so all these are called as a functional units of a computer or a functional units of a digital system right so this is a basic thing in our computer organization so hope you understood this one and if you are having any doubts regarding these uh, functional units Feel free to post your doubts in the comment section. Definitely, I will try to clarify all your doubts. And if you really enjoyed my session, like my session, share my session with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.